I have talked about these before, and I bet you have seen the television insurance commercials from Progressive about not becoming your parent. And like I said, I've talked about them before. I just really love them. I think they're very, very funny, probably because they almost all apply to me so, so uh, accurately. Moaning every time you sit down in a chair, having to get to know the waiter or waitress's name and their whole story and ask them questions. Adults struggling with, well, what is a PDF and how am I downloading something or an app? And also, and no one be offended because I know people have these signs, the ones that say, do we really need a sign to tell you to live, laugh, and love? The adults in the commercial say yes, and the teacher says no, and throws a sign in the trash can. I might say that today about Mother's Day. Do we really need a day on the calendar to tell us to love our mothers, to remember them, to be nice to them? I hope not. You all know the difficulties with this day. I don't even want to use the title too much because there are little ears who might be beginning to ask, but what about my situation? I don't have so much to celebrate today. Scripture calls us over and over to be sensitive to the weakest among us, like the hurting among us. And so on days like today, when society commands certain celebrations, we are thankful and rejoice with those who can, but we're also aware of those who cannot, for those who do not celebrate very loudly this day. So back to my question. Do we really need a day to tell us to remember certain people in our lives? Grandpa day, grandma day, dad, mom. Do we need to be commanded to love? Well, based on our lessons we just heard, apparently the answer is a resounding yes. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. I listened to several sermons on this passage just to listen, and yes, to see if there were any good insights or stories. After all, my Shakespeare festival told me that the, the story belongs to the one who tells it best. This is a website which is supposed to have great preachers, and I have to tell you what I heard, um, at least for this week, did not inspire me. Both sermons said what we already know, and what I don't have to go on and on about, quite simply, about how the word love has been trivialized in our society. I mean, I doubt it was trivialized in the same way when Jesus gave this command. There were not ads saying that you know, we love a car, or people saying, don't you just love her hair, but, but, but the people to whom Jesus spoke, including his disciples, including those in religious circles who opposed him, did hear a lot about love. They heard about the command to love. The command to love was not new. We are looking at the book of Deuteronomy in our Bible study right now, and in many ways it's a very, very simple book. It is written as if it was a sermon by Moses, maybe, maybe remembering a sermon he once gave, as the people of Israel were about to enter the promised land, what it says is this. You are to remember God's commands. You are to love the Lord your God with all your heart and worship God only. And you are to love your neighbor as yourself. You are to love, it says, because God has first loved you. God brought you out of the land of Egypt. God rescued you. God has forgiven you over and over again. And now God was once again going to give you blessings you are commanded to live in this blessing. You're, you're to live into it. You are commanded to abide in this new land, to use language from that other lesson that was read for us. This land of milk and honey, of goodness and grace that you do not deserve, and yet I am giving it to you. And this is what I ask. This is what I command. Love what I have given you. And when you love something, well, you nurture it, you care for it, you treasure it, you sacrifice for it. Abide in this land, God says. Abide in my love. We have been given a place to abide. We are called to abide in God's love. It is as surely a place to abide as was the promised land. As our first lesson from 1 John told us, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. And if we abide in that love, we are called as citizens of that love, of that land, to act and live and be true to our callings. We are commanded because we all know, when we're honest, that it is not always easy to love. 
It is sometimes not easy to love even those closest to us. It is not easy to love the people we encounter on the street or in our lives. So commands help us. I was thinking about this lesson the other day, and this sounds trivial, I know, but it's one of the blessings and the curses of, of my call because you think about the Bible during the week, especially the lesson that you might be working on, if you will. And I was going through a drive through a drive at a fast food place, and the person on the squawk box was, well, not exactly a model employee or well-trained. And I got very frustrated. I wanted to respond in an ugly and demanding way, but honestly, honestly, this lesson was on my mind. And I thought in a moment, how was I called to love that person, that unknown person behind the squawk box who was making probably $10 an hour? And doing something, by the way, I probably wouldn't have been doing something, by the way, that I probably would have trouble doing, just so I can have my french fries. How do we love? It is a love that calls for sacrificial living. And while it may be dramatic to tell some story of someone who literally sacrifices him or herself for another, that is most likely and hopefully not going to happen to any of us. But what parts of our lives can we put down and give up for the sake of those who we are commanded to love? What time in our lives can we sacrifice? What, what resources, what part of our ego and our needs, our desires, can we sacrifice and give up for the sake of the other, the other who we may not like at all, but whom we are commanded to love? I do hope we have had some examples of this in our lives. It's funny, those commercials I talked about, talk about helping us not grow up like our parents. My parents were not perfect, and not at all, but when I think about their, their best moments, I, I think of the ways that, yes, they did sacrifice for me and for others without question, and I saw ways that they sacrificed and taught love. And you know where they learned that from? From their parents, and yes, from the church. The church is meant to be a, a school for love, the, the church where, where people are meant to learn the true meaning of God's love. The church is a place where I saw people like my mother love others because they were commanded to. I told you this story a long time ago, but it is appropriate and it stuck with me. When I was very young, it had to be third grade or beyond because we were already living in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and we moved there and started third grade, and so anyway, the church parking lot, church office were here, and there's a little row home right next to the church office, and I think it's still standing. It just always refused to sell out to the hospital, which took over almost the whole area. So picture this little row home with a little sliver of a yard and, you know, not wealthy in the least bit, a, a broken down back porch. And I remember an older lady who lived there, but I don't recall much about her except this. There's a young boy there at one time as well. I think the woman was his mother or her grandmother. And at some time, this young boy's mother died in a fire caused by smoking. My parents brought him to our house for a time and gave him some of my clothes to wear. Ironically, they were clothes that, that were undoubtedly given me as hand-me-downs. But I was a little boy and I was learning. I was learning about being a human being and I was even a little jealous, to tell you the truth, of the attention the boy was getting from my mother and father. And I don't recall what I said or did, but I still recall this day, I can see my mother saying to me, sitting me down, she in no way scolded me or reprimanded me, but talking to me. And I simply recall her saying something along the lines, but son, this boy has lost his mother and he needs us right now. It was a lesson for my mother that I was able to hear. The church, the community, is a school for God's love. For a love that, yes, is countercultural. For it is a sacrificial love that never asks, what's in it for me? It is a love that, yes, we need signs to remind us. We need worship to remind us. We need commandments to remind us. We need God's meal of grace and love to remind us and fill us with God's love so that we can go forth and do as we are schooled. Yes, we need to be schooled and reminded to love. 
and yes, to hear the command that we are to love. We are to be reminded and that God has loved us first and God loves us last and God will never stop doing so for his is truly an everlasting love. Amen.